Hi, this is Jennifer Karinas of the Florida Bar Federal Court Practice Committee, Federal Corner Rules Update. There are several proposed amendments to the federal appellate, criminal, and evidence rules that are open for comment until February 15th, 2018. First, Criminal Rule 16.1. This is a new rule intended to address discovery problems in complex cases with voluminous discovery, particularly those with large quantities of electronically stored information. The rule has two sections. The first section requires the attorneys for the government and defense to confer no later than 14 days after arraignment to try to agree on timing and procedures for discovery. The second section provides that after the parties hold this conference, either jointly or one party alone can ask the court to determine or modify the timing, manner, or other aspects of disclosure to facilitate preparation for trial. It's important to note that this rule doesn't require the court to accept the party's agreement, displace local rules or standing orders, or limit the court's authority to control its docket. The committee notes make it clear that the proposed rule intentionally avoided specifying the standards for the manner or timing of disclosure. Rather, it's intended to provide a process that encourages the parties to confer early in each case, but it does encourage counsel to be familiar with best practices and give some examples of those. Second, Federal Rule of Evidence 807, the residual exception to the hearsay rule. Now, the driving force behind this amendment is to address what the advisory committee identified as several problems with the rule. First, the requirement that the court find equivalent circumstantial guarantees of trustworthiness has proved difficult to apply because there's no uniform standard of trustworthiness. Among the categorical exceptions to the hearsay rule, there are different types of guarantees of reliability of varying strength. Given this difficulty, the committee determined that a better approach is to require the judge to find the hearsay offered under 807 is supported by, quote, sufficient guarantees of trustworthiness. The amendment allows the court to consider the totality of circumstances under which the statement was made and any corroborating evidence for the statement. Apparently, there has been disagreement among courts about whether a court is required under the residual exception to consider corroborating evidence. The amendment tries to impose a uniform approach and recognizes that the existence or absence of corroboration is relevant to whether a statement is accurate but not dispositive. The committee cautions that this change to trustworthiness clause doesn't mean the parties can bypass the admissibility of hearsay under 803 or 804 and proceed directly to the residual exception. In fact, the rule now explicitly requires the proponent to show the proffered hearsay is not specifically covered by a hearsay exception in 803 or 804. 807 remains an exception to be invoked only when necessary. The committee retained the requirement that the proponent show the hearsay statement is more probative than any other evidence the, pro the proponent can obtain. But the requirements that the residual evidence must hearsay must be evidence of a material fact admission will best serve the purposes of the rules and the interests of justice was deleted because it was considered superfluous. It's already covered in other rules. Uh, the notice changes. There are three changes. It requires the proponent to disclose the quote substance of the statement and replaces the requirement to disclose the particulars of a hearsay statement because it wasn't clear that that required the proponent to disclose the substance. It eliminates the requirement to disclose the declarant's address, but you still have to disclose the declarant's name. The rule now requires pretrial notice to be in writing, satisfied by electronic form, and it's intended to reduce the disputes about whether notice was actually provided. Finally, the notice provision now includes a good cause exception. It recognizes that many courts have already implied a good cause exception to the notice requirement. The committee believes it's necessary in limited circumstances, such as the cases where a proponent is not aware of the existence of the statement until trial begins or a witness without warning becomes unavailable during trial. In these cases, written notice is not required and notice is provided at trial. There are also some changes to the appellate rules. Most involve changing the requirement to mail various filings and replaces it with the word send to make electronic filing and service possible. One notable change is Federal Rule of Appellate Procedure 26.1, which now requires a disclosure statement from an organizational victim in a criminal case unless the government shows good cause not to do so. If you're interested in submitting comments to any of these rule changes, visit www.uscourts.gov slash rules hyphen policies and look for the link Proposed Amendments Published for Public Comment. The full link is available on the Federal Corner website 
as are links to all of the rules I'm discussing. Remember that the comment period ends February 15th of this year. Coming soon on the Federal Corner, we will discuss what the Advisory Committee on Civil Rules calls potential rule amendment ideas to Federal Rule of Civil Procedure 30B6, which covers depositions of organizations, and Federal Rule of Evidence 801D1A, which address the admissibility of inconsistent statements as substantive evidence. Thank you.